Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. If you've ever felt like rejoicing because of lots of beautiful promises in the Word of God, you'll be rejoicing today. We're studying about Abraham's seed. It's part of our series, The Promise, God's Everlasting Covenant. And we've discovered in this series that God is faithful to all of His promises, even when, sadly, human beings are not faithful. God is faithful. Isn't that good news? And we're going to study today. And I'm excited because one of our team, Sabina, is going to be teaching today. And we're excited because God is raising up tens of thousands of leaders around the world, men and women who are saying, I want to be part of sharing the life-changing Word of God. So thanks for joining us. We're glad you're with us today. And greetings to our team, Hope Sabbath School Gideon's Band. <laughs> that, that's a Bible illustration, right? Just a small band but God is going to work a miracle even under these difficult times. And by the way, if you're wondering why we're spaced out so much and we're not actually going to sing, you'll sing for us, it's because we're still in the middle of a pandemic with restrictions. But God's message is not locked up. Amen? Amen. Amen. God continues to share a life-changing message with the world, and we're glad that you can be part of it. Well, it's always wonderful to hear from you, Hope Sabbath School members. I know we enjoy hearing from our Hope Sabbath School members around the world. This is from Linda in Tortola. Does anyone know where Tortola is? Yes, I see a couple of nods. At least Jason's ready to give a good guess. Where's Tortola? Well, it's in the Caribbean. I think it's over uh, somewhere by Bermuda or somewhere there. Somewhere yeah. that we'd like to go visit, right? Yeah. It's in the Caribbean somewhere, I believe. <laughs> it's in the U.S. Virgin Islands, yes. Tortola. And Linda writes and says, This evening, I tuned into Hope Sabbath School for the very first time. Wow. wow. And my family and I greatly enjoyed watching it together. You see, every, every week, we've got new people joining our global family. Thank you so much for a wonderfully insightful, interactive, and inspirational program. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, Linda writes, we will tune in again to study along and learn more. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Well, Linda, thanks for writing to us. God bless your family there in Tortola in the U.S. Virgin Islands. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Here's a note from Dottie in Connecticut in the United States of America. And Dottie writes and says, By watching Hope Sabbath School, I am now a Seventh-day Adventist. Wow. wow. It's been a year now. Wow. wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I say thank you, Lord Jesus, too. Yes. Thank you for Hope Channel. I found the truth, and wow. now I serve God. Amen. Amen. Wow. Love you Praise all. Wow. <laughs> well, Dottie, thanks for writing to us from wow. Connecticut. You know, I just want to use my favorite Hebrew word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful when we can share our testimony? Yes. Because we wouldn't know unless Dottie wrote wow. yeah. That's right. and said, I want to share my testimony with you. You can write to us, by the way, at sshope at hopetv.org. You say, well, I just have a little testimony. But that could be a testimony that would change someone's life. Yeah. Well, here's a note from Robert. He's a Kenyan, and he is living studying in Hungary. Mm -hmm. Now, that is one of the most difficult languages in the world, wow. mm. Hungarian. Wow. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long way from Kenya, right? And Robert mm. writes and says, Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give Robert a wave. <laughs> I love the work you're doing, and I always pray for you. Mm. Oh, Did you know there was a Kenyan in Hungary praying for you? Wow. <laughs> I've been following Hope Sabbath School since 2015. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. May God continue blessing you. Well, Robert, if you're listening to our program today, I'd like you to write and tell us what you're studying there in Hungary. Maybe it's uh, electronics or mathematics, or maybe not Hungarian literature, I don't know. <laughs> but God bless you, and may mm -hmm. you be a shining light for Jesus while you're studying there yeah. in that beautiful country. Amazing. What an international team we have, mm -hmm. don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Here's a donor a note, a regular handwritten note oh. from Canada. Okay. 
and the donor rights. And you know, we don't read names. We're not highlighting people. But we do want to thank you. We're a donor-supported ministry. We want to thank you for being part of the miracle. And this donor writes and says, I've been watching Hope Sabbath School since I discovered it about three years ago. Mm -hmm. I study by myself and then tune in <laughs> and watch Hope Sabbath School. And your panel makes it personal for me. Mm. I watch on Monday and Friday evenings. Since the pandemic, our church streams Hope Sabbath School at our regular Sabbath School time. That means everybody's watching. Yeah. <laughs> I'm able to watch it on my iPad and I'm doubly blessed. I've included a small donation, just a token of my appreciation for what you're doing for me and thousands of others. God bless you all. And a donation of $200 yeah. to Amen. help Hope Sabbath School. Praise yeah. God. Nice Thank God. you so much for partnering with us, and thank you to each one. You know, you can just go to hopetv.org slash hopess. That's our website. There's a little yellow thing that says donate. Bloop. You can just push that button, and you can be part of the miracle. Well, here's one last note from Colette in Jamaica. Mm. And Colette writes and says, I enjoy your program immensely. I watch it on YouTube, and I'm able to pause so I can take notes. Mm. Nice. It's also a powerful tool that I utilize when I teach a Sabbath school class. Mm. I also enjoy the scripture songs and always sing along. Please pray for my family that we will be faithful to the end. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 I will be praying for you all. God Amen. bless the team. I love you all. And call that. I want to tell you, that touched my heart because that's what we pray for each one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faithful to Jesus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the end. Faithful to Jesus. And as we study the Word of God today, we're praying the Holy Spirit will bless each heart. But first, we've got to sing a song. 3,000 years old with a tune my wife composed to help us memorize it. Mm -hmm. Psalm 105, verses 1 to 5. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Let's sing it together. Oh, give thanks to the privilege it is to call upon the name of the Lord as we study. Amen. And Sabina, as you lead us in the study today, why don't you begin with prayer? Yes. So let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for this wonderful opportunity to be here, united with my brothers and sisters that are watching us, and also with my group of friends in this studio, Lord. We praise your name for the privilege that we have to study your word and I want to ask that your Holy Spirit will be here upon Please. me, upon each one of us, Lord, impressing us with truth. Lord, we want to know more who you are. We want to know more of who you want us to be, Father. So I pray that now as we look into each one of those Bible texts, that you are going to refresh our mind and our hearts with truth. And all those things we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm very excited to be here with you. I'm so happy. Thank you, Pastor Derek. 
And I also want to thank Jesus for the opportunity to be participating as a facilitator for the first time. So that's amazing. I'm very happy for that. Um, as I was studying the lesson, the first thing that I thought of was um, about my childhood growing up. I really enjoyed going to a school. I had great delight in all my classes, but there was one time in the week where usually I wanted to hide. Mm -hmm. And that's when I had to go to my physical education classes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because I don't like exercising or because I don't like some sorts of exercises, but because growing up, I was not the best in playing in teams like soccer or basketball. So the teacher would always ask the best students, the best players to mm. pick some people. And usually I was one of the last to be picked. Mm. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was a very embarrassing uh, moment in the week, uh, even though I had good friends that also were not the best players. But there was one time usually when I actually enjoyed playing groups. And that's when I was playing with my family, especially when my father was playing with us. And that's because my father Whenever we were playing teams, he would first pick me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was always confident that I was not going to be left. Um, and this completely changed my game. Whenever we were playing together, and I knew I was going to play, and he was going to pick me. So as we reflect here uh, in this illustration that is true about my life, I can think also about the children of God, the children of Israel. You know. Uh, what it would be like maybe for a group of people to be chosen as a nation for a special mission? Mm. And what if this special group of people were selected by God? Mm. So as we start off uh, the study today, I would like us to take a look on scriptures to know more about how is it that Israel and the children of God reacted to this special choice. Mm. So maybe Travis, would you please read for us Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 8. So Deuteronomy 7. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Deuteronomy 7, 6 mm -hmm. through 8. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Hmm. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all the peoples. But, the, but because the Lord loves you, and because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. So already in this text, we can have some revelation of the reasons why God chose Israel. And would you be able to share with us, what is it that the text is saying? Why is it that God chose these people? It's not anything that we've done. He just, mm. because he loves us. Because he loves us. Jason. There's also a reference there about swore to your father. So God had mm. promised Abraham, had promised the descendants uh, that they would be a special people for him. So God's keeping mm -hmm. his promise there. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, yes, Travis. I love that the way that it is written though. It's not because I swore to your fathers and then, but he's, it's <laughs> because I love you and because I swore to yes. your fathers. Yeah. And so, you know, like your story you shared with you about your dad, you know, he <laughs> picked you because he loved you. Exactly. And, and that's the same thing he's doing here. <laughs> yes, awesome, yes, Billy. And also the context is that I think back then, like people didn't worship a God because the God loved them, it's because out of fear. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. new concept of, of having a God who actually loves you, this <laughs> back then blew people's mind. Wow. And it was also because, and also what God is saying is that, you know, he did not chose them because of their merits. Yes. In mm -hmm. fact, I think he chose them so that they have nothing to boast mm -hmm. themselves yes. about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and it, it's so interesting that he picked groups of people that, you know, we wouldn't pick. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. So it sounds like they were not the best players either, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like. So from Deuteronomy, we can know that God loved them and also that he had an oath that he had made with Abraham. So those are the reasons those uh, verses are giving us. But there is more additional revelation in scriptures that we can look into Ezekiel 16, 8. Uh, and maybe 
Stephanie, would you read for us Ezekiel 16, 8? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you. And you became mine, mm -hmm. says the Lord God. Mm. Wow. So what extra revelation do you find here in this text? Can you think of something else? Um, the third than what we have already spoken? Yes, Pastor It, it seems to me, Sabina, yeah. that he chooses us not because of what we offer him, but because of our great need. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes. He loves us and he yeah. sees our great need. Yeah. And so he extends his covering over us. Yes. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that's a beautiful picture. Yeah. Uh, anyone else has? Yes, Jason. Well, it says covered your nakedness. So that means there's a sign that Abraham, his people, there was a clear lack. They really not only were they just not the best players, but they were kind of like the worst players. They, <laughs> yes, they lacked some of the skills exactly, you would think we needed. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah, I really love this passage in Ezekiel. I don't know any one of you know better about the context in which he is speaking of that, but it's considered as a passage like the prodigal son in the New Testament, but we can say that's the prodigal daughter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, if we go a few verses uh, before verse 8, say if you look on verse, for instance, um, 5. So chapter 15, 16, verse 5. Can you read that for us as well, Stephanie? Sure. Um, so Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 5. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'll be reading um, from the New King James Version. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 5. No, I pitied you to do any of these things for you, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out into the open field when you yourself were loathed on the day you were born. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. So that's what God is speaking about his chosen people. Mm. So again, did he chose them because of any special a gift or quality that they had? No. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like they were, as Jason was say, saying, a people of great need, that yeah. they actually had a great need. And especially here on this verse, when it says verse uh, 8, that uh, we had read first, at least on my version, it says, um, when I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed your time was the time of love. So I don't know if anyone has a different version um, from, from mine. Mine is New King James Version. But it sounds like in this version that I have, that it's as if it was, you know, when you're already mature for something, when it says, oh, it's your time now to, um, you are ready to teach. You are ready to uh, drive, a maybe car. drive a car, exactly. You are ready to have a child. For, for me, when I read in this version here, it sounds like, oh, you're ready to receive love. Mm. So you're ready, you're ready to receive me pour, pouring love upon you. Mm. It's more wow. than time for you to receive love from me. Mm. So we already have concluded here that God's choice for his children was based on the oath and on love. And it would be easy for them to become proud, right? That's true. Mm -hmm. If they had chosen and, and that's it. How would you, um, if you have been chosen, how would you respond to that choice? Mm. Billy? I mean, it depends if, if it's God, if it's anybody, it depends on the situation. But I think for God, seeing how God acted and how, you know, he chose, you know, Abraham, yeah. is, it, it's very purposeful. He, yeah. It's not random. So if God chose me, I would say, okay, thank you. But, you know, why? You know, I want to know mm. why you chose me. Okay, yeah. yes. Mm, yes, Jason. So I'm thinking there's that phrase above all the peoples on the face of the earth. And so like if someone came to me and said, Jason, I chose you because you were the best at something like you're good at, like law or politics mm -hmm. or whatever, I'd be like, oh, well, thank mm -hmm. you, God, or thank you, person. Wow, I, yes. I have some pretty good accomplishments here. <laughs> so I would feel, kind, I mean, being honest, I would feel kind of prideful and good about myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, would, I would think, oh, I've got something worthy. I've got some merits there. Yes, okay. 
Yes, Travis. I think the only way a person can really respond is say yes when you're because he's he's choosing them for a mission as well. And I, and yeah. Pastor Derek, just a few lessons ago, I watched him with tears in his eyes say, "If you would have known the, my past, you wouldn't have me leading Hope Sabbath School." Mm -hmm. And here we are as a panel. All of us have a past, and God has led us to this point. Yes. It's Amen. a privilege to be chosen. Yes. And so when you understand mm -hmm. that it's a privilege to be chosen, you respect that privilege mm. and you want to honor God with that. Amen. That's so true. Yes. Yeah, I also can think of my response to my dad when he would invite me to play with him. It was different from, like, I knew it was not for my marriage. So I always wanted to follow what he was kind of requesting in the team. So if he told me, oh, you need to look at that person who is playing over there. You need to run now. I would, ready to, I would be ready to respond. <laughs> And it also always made me feel very loved, to be honest. Like that's my response in that situation. Yes, Jason. That's true. I think about that because I'm not that good myself when it comes to like sports and some physical activities. Mm -hmm. But I think of I know certain people who are and generally if you try to give them guidance, well, they already know it. They already know what they're doing. And so they're not yeah. going to listen to you. Whereas yeah. like me, if someone gives me some advice, I'm like, sure, please, anything <laughs> that'll be helpful. So that's yeah. that's one nice thing. You're more willing to receive advice when you have a great lack. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so now transition a little further in the Word of God. We do have references to find out how is it that the children of God had res has re have responded to God's choice. So let's start looking first into Genesis. Um, let's see. Heidi, would you please read for us Genesis uh, 12, verse 1? Yes. All right, I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Mm, okay. And also now, Stephanie, uh, would you please read for us Genesis 13, from verses 14 to uh, 17? All right, and the New King James Version says, And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. Oh. Mm. Okay, thank you. And the last one, uh, maybe Billy, would you please read for us Genesis 15, 13 to 16? I'll be reading from the New International Version. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they served as slaves, and afterwards they will come out uh, with great possessions. You, however, will, be, you, um, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. Mm -hmm. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sins of the Am Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. Okay, mm mm -hmm. thank you. So from these verses, we can uh, understand already that God, in, ch in choosing these children, He gave them land and a promise, right? A promise mm -hmm. for land and to multiply them, to make them a, a nation. Mm -hmm. um, and um, here, if we consider that God was making of them a nation, when is it that the Lord intended for the children of Israel to, pro to possess this land? that we are talking about here. Do you recall a passage in the Bible? Or, um... It seems like he wanted uh, that to happen right after they, mm -hmm. they um, were freed from Egypt, from the passage that Billy just read from that, that period okay. of 400 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if we look at Numbers 13, 31 to 33, maybe if Travis, Travis could read that for us. Numbers 13, 31 through 33? Uh, maybe from 31 to 33 and then 14, 1 and 2. 
Okay. 14, 1, 2, 14, 2. 31 through 33 and 14, 1 and 2, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Yes. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone out as spies in the land that devours its inhabitants and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the, the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we are all like grasshoppers in our own sight. Mm. And we, and so we, and so are we in their sight. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Mm. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. So why is it that the Israelites were initially unwilling to enter the land? What happened? They are very afraid, terrified. Very afraid, and terrified. And it's like, hello, you just saw 10 plagues and you've seen mm -hmm. all these other miracles, one after another leading up to this moment. And now you're afraid of this, mm. of giants and of these people. Okay, Billy? Well, I mean, at the same time, I think there are some legitimate reasons why, why people should be afraid. But, yeah. you know, um, I think in this case, it was a case of misinformation because mm. they saw a good land and then they reversed their decision, at least some of those who reported, saying that, you know, they were, um, yeah, they were basically giants and uh, they were like as grasshoppers. So it was like a case of misinformation and then the children of Israel, Israel bought into it. Mm, okay, so Jason, yes. So God had given them the promise. They had the covenant and you saw what he did. He brought them out of Egypt through the plagues. He destroyed the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. He performed all kinds of miracles for them. So God was showing that he could uphold his end of the bargain and that his covenant was sure with them. But then they started doubting when they mm -hmm. saw all these obstacles and challenges and they decided to let the obstacles and challenges uh, take more place in their life than the trust of looking at what God had just done for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so it sounds like there was a lot of unbelief, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Stephanie. So there was a good report and then there was a not so good report. Mm, and they okay. chose the those who had a, a poor report yes. and they chose that direction of uh -huh. lack of faith. Um, but it's interesting that uh, Joshua and Caleb, who came back with a good report, yes. they did recognize the fact that yes, there are giants in the land, mm -hmm. yes. but we can take this land. Yeah, absolutely. They knew that their strength was in God. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I, it's a matter of who do I trust? Yes. Do I trust myself, my sight and what I can see? Or do I trust by faith, mm -hmm. the God who has done mm -hmm. a multitude of miracles yes. before this? Yeah, yeah, so we have yeah. fear, we have unbelief, we have a lack of perspective, right? Like from seeing things from a, the right perspective. Yes, Travis. Well, I'm just going back to um, 13, um, chapter 13, verse two in, in the book of Numbers. And it says, go and send man into the land, um, which I am giving you. Mm. He never even said they had to fight. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. He said, I'm giving it to you. Yes. It's a gift. So, so, it, so, so it's hard, you know, when you're looking at this to think, here's a gift. No, we can't have it. It's, mm. it's too, you know, but he never did. These were perceived, perceived. you know, giants and, yes. and obstacles mm -hmm. along the way that they mm -hmm. built up in their own mind because God was going to give them the land. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He was actually going to fight for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and who was eventually the one chosen to take hold of the land? Joshua. Joshua. And why Joshua? What, why, why was Joshua so special? I think we've kind of already uh, started talking about it, but maybe if we look into Joshua um, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, mm. and then, so Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, Katie, would you please read that for us? Sure. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel, 
Mm. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and, the, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. Mm. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Mm. Mm. Thank you. And there is one more text that is important also for we to find out why is it that Joshua was the chosen one and that's Numbers 14 verses 6 to 8. So maybe Jason, if you could read that for us. Sure, I have the New King James Version here. Numbers chapter 14 verses 6 through 8. Mm. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Mm, wow. So what is it, why is it that Joshua was the one who was selected for this task? What, what do you see in scripture here? He had what they lacked. He had faith and trust in God. Mm. Like Stephanie said, yes. you know, he recognized that the power was not in himself or in wow. them, the power was in God. Mm. Amen, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, Travis. This, when I, when I first studied this, it had a real significance to me because I learned that the Exodus is basically a parallel story of the plan of salvation. Yes. And so the promised land is heaven to me, you know, in, mm -hmm. this, in this parallel that I'm in. And so I can't earn my salvation. Mm -hmm. God, it's a gift. The Bible says mm -hmm. that it's a gift. Yes. And salvation is a gift to me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to fight for it. Yes. I just believe it and accept it. And, and so this became important to me in my, in my walk with God is that God, yes. every day is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Everything is a gift from God. And I don't have to buy it. I can't purchase it. I yes. get it for free. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's all a matter of perspective, as Stephanie was saying. You know, the same gift was mm -hmm. given to all of them yeah. mm -hmm. and some of them chose to accept it and receive and go ahead and some of them questioned God's ability mm. to give the gift, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what is it that we learn from this experience? Is there anything that we can bring to our own lives mm -hmm. uh, today, Jason? So I think we can learn from this to trust God no matter what the circumstances. I actually remember my own personal uh, story. I kind of had a situation like this. I was wondering, you know, about jobs and, you know, this one job was ending and how God could get me to another position. And then overnight, I received a, a call and an email um, from a very prominent uh, organization or institution and I was like wow you know God could actually give me a job to interview with them and even though I didn't ha get that job at the time just the fact that God could get me an interview in in that position that was a sign to me wow okay there's pretty much nothing that God can't do yeah. and that's what we see here is <laughs> exactly. that if you have faith God can put you pretty much yes. anywhere he mm. wants you to be and it's not about you it's not about how good of a player you are it, it's more as long as you're willing to let God use you you can conquer giants and he can put you in all kinds of positions. Exactly. Mm. Amen. Yes, Bailey. And also not to be intimidated by threats mm. uh, because yeah. that will, um, that can silence us. But, you know, yeah. be, it's almost like, you know, we need to understand that, you know, God should be the ones that we need to fear. Um, because the passage, I think later on in chapter 14, talks about the people who wanted to stone them. They wanted to kill them mm. because they were telling the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you compare in history, a lot of times, you know, people of God, you know, were, were called to stand up yeah. despite mm -hmm. the, tr the threats. Some of them mm -hmm. stayed silent and some of them stood up and they suffered the consequences. And I think even till now, we need to also stand up for injustices, things that are not true mm -hmm. um, and stand up for for the truth. Um, because I think, yeah, because that's basically what God is looking for. He's looking for people who are willing to stand mm -hmm. despite all the threats. Yes, yes, Heidi. Um, immediately when, when I read that question, like the, a verse came to my mind. I don't know if we have a moment to go there. In Matthew yeah. chapter 7, mm. okay. verses 13 through 14. Matthew 
chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. And it says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. And one lesson that I learned here mm. is that, you know, the report of the 10 out of the 12 spies of the majority yeah. was incorrect. Yeah. It was not in keeping with the will of God. Yeah. And here the minority, the mm. two out of the 12 were yeah. actually correct. Yeah. And that makes me think in this world today, how often are the majority wrong, mm, well. you know? And we are so quick to yield to what society is telling us. Mm -hmm. This is how, you know, this is what you should do when you have feelings, you know, for someone or this is what's correct mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's outdated or wow. what have you. There are a lot of things that this could apply to, wow. but God is telling us that the majority are not always correct. Wow. And we need to be very careful to make sure that whatever we do is aligned with the Word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Amen. Yeah, and I think that that's such an important lesson also. Thank you, Heidi, for sharing and Jason. Um, so it looks like we already learned that God chose these people, His children, out of love and to also fulfill His oath. We also f discovered here that as part of this covenant and choice, He is giving them, He's promising them land. And that's one of the things he's promising his land and that in conquering this land, many of them already did not enjoy the gift. That, um, uh, just two of them enjoyed the gift and that's because they believed, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in scriptures, we have other examples and situations in which you encounter both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, this dichotomy of people who will believe versus people who will not believe. And usually, in many instances, the people who, who are the ones who are believing, they are called the remnant. Mm -hmm. So here, when we look um, in some texts, and I, and I can give you the examples here in um, Daniel 9, 3 and 4, if we could go there. Okay, so Travis, you have it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could read for us Daniel uh, chapter 9, verses 3 and 4. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Mm -hmm. And I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. Mm, okay, so just like Joshua and Caleb, we also have Daniel as an example, right? Mm -hmm. And is there anyone else that come to your mind in the Old Testament that is an example of a person who is keeping their faith no matter what? Mm -hmm. Yes, Billy. Uh, Noah, like Noah. he was one of the, maybe the only family that really mm -hmm. believed God when, um, so many others were against uh, mm -hmm. what God was, was, was saying. So he was, I think, one, maybe one of the first ones who okay. stood up mm -hmm. for God. So Noah can be an example also of, of a remnant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. Um, yes, Jason, you were saying something? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I think of uh, Joseph with his brothers because, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe he wasn't perfect per se, but his brothers, we have a, a long history of some of the uh, non-remnant things they did Whereas mm -hmm. Joseph, he honored God even when he was put in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being an example later to his brothers and kind of almost bringing them back into a remnant, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, yes Pastor Sabina, Derek. I, I, yes. I love the story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. And we call them by their Babylonian names more often, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, but, but their story is told particularly in Daniel 1 and in Daniel 3. Yeah. But to me, it, there's a lesson about the remnant there. Mm -hmm. 
because many young young leaders, young people were brought into Babylon. That's right. But on the plane, only three stood up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and didn't bow down to the golden idol. Yes. I don't know where Daniel was. He didn't bow down. I know that. I don't yeah. know whether he was sick or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But but they were also part of the faithful remnant. Yes. yes. They don't have yeah. a book of the Bible named after them like uh -huh. Daniel. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, uh, they said, we will be part of the faithful remnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I guess that, that reinforces what we've heard f from Haiti. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, you know, don't look at what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Look to God yes. and what He's asking. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God had said, don't bow down to any idols. You know, don't have yeah. any God besides mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And so they stood, even if it would cost uh, their lives. Their lives, yeah. And so, but the other lesson I learned is, um, I think it's a blessing that you're not alone as the mm -hmm. remnant. Mm -hmm. Yes. That you yes. are a community. Yes, right? amen. I'm sure they, well, it tells us in Daniel yeah. 2, they prayed together. Mm -hmm. They yes. prayed for each other, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think the blessing that the remnant, that there are, you might go, I'm all alone. No, mm -hmm. there are young and old men and women who will say, I will not bow down to the yes. lies of this world. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I will be faithful to God. I will be faithful to God. Amen, Pastor Derek. And what else can, as we reflect about those stories, can you think of someone else mm -hmm. that, uh, in the Old Testament? I think of Elijah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, he, he even were, was came to the point where he thought he was the last one. Mm -hmm. And uh, but God has His faithful people in all times. Seven thousand. Yes. Seven thousand who had not bowed yes. their knee to Baal, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, <laughs> he thought that he was the only one. So we, I think, at times we can feel like, mm -hmm. you know, God is. Are we the the only ones left, or the only one left? But God has His faithful people. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's so, so powerful. And also, we know that in the New Testament, there is an important passage. Maybe we can go there. Revelation mm. uh, chapter 12, 17. And maybe, Billy, would you, would you find it? Yes. Revelation 12, 17. Would you please read that for us? Yes, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Mm -hmm. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage, wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commandments and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. So this passage here, it appears to me, is talking about the less people who will be the remnant. So we started the lesson talking about the first person, the first people who are remnant, mm -hmm. and now we are looking into the last people who will be remnant. And what is it that the Bible is teaching us about them? What is it that John reveal about this faithful remnant? That they will be persecuted. That they will be persecuted, yes. Jason? They keep the commandments of God. They keep the commandments of God, yes. They have the faith of Jesus Christ. And they have the faith of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The testimony of Jesus. Yeah. And the testimony of Jesus. So how does that, when you think about Abraham, and then you put his life in, in, in thinking about our lives nowadays, and as we look to be part of a remnant, what types of lessons can we learn? Who, who, what is the type of people that we need to be to be part of the remnant? Think about Abraham and think about the people in Revelation that God is calling us to be. Yes, Travis. I think of the last part of the verse, they had the testimony of Jesus. Mm. Abraham believed God and it was accounted him for righteousness. Yes. We just looked at K K um, Caleb and Joshua and they believed that God would give them the land. Yes. The testimony of Jesus we had that he will get us through. He will, yes. if we have the word of God hidden in our hearts, mm -hmm. we will go through that time. With, yes. with, then the testimony of Jesus will strengthen us. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yes, you were saying something, Jason? Uh, I think yeah. about the whole uh, commandments of God and the okay. Ten Commandments originally, God's yes. guidelines of love, were given to His covenant people, the children of Israel there, the descendants of Abraham. And so, uh, these commandments, they're, they're simply the descriptions of what God's people will look mm -hmm. like. This is how we will love each other. This mm -hmm. is how we'll show love for God. This is how we'll show love for man. And so, uh, that will be a description that we will see of 
God's remnant people, just as God wanted the children of Israel to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Pastor Derek. I think it may be easy to, to miss, but, but yes. one should ask in verse 17 of Revelation 12, why is the dragon mm. so angry with the woman? Mm. Mm. And the dragon, if you if you read in that, it tells us right there is mm -hmm. is Satan, yes. that mm -hmm. angel yes. who rebelled mm -hmm. against God, mm -hmm. and and the woman we know is is God's faithful church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is she so angry? And the answer is because the dragon wants us to doubt the promises of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. The dragon wants us to turn away mm -hmm. from the loving Creator mm -hmm. God. Yes. And and yes. when we refuse to do that, it makes the dragon very angry. Yes. 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 Yeah. But but if we focus on the dragon, we could get intimidated, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But right. if we focus on God, yes. yes. Then then we're strong and very courageous. Yes. yes. But I think, you know, the this great battle, we're in it right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're in the closing scenes of this great battle between mm -hmm. good yes. and evil. And praise God, just like there was a remnant um, mm. back in the time of uh, the 12 spies, yeah. there, there will be a remnant today Amen. who's faithful to yes. God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just like these people mm -hmm. that we've, we saw in the Old Testament, that each one of, of them that we were mentioning here, they have also the testament, testimony of Jesus in some way. And mm -hmm. that's how we know if we look into the book of Galatians, we can go to Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 6. To nine. Um, and um, Stephanie, would you read that for us? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, mm. saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. Mm. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Amen. Wow. So we, we see here a truth about the remnant that was truth also about Abraham and that should be truth about us. And what is that? Can you see? <laughs> what is it that it's saying, verse 6? Yes, Heidi. That anyone can be saved. You know, that the mm -hmm. promise isn't only for his biological descendants. Yes. It's for his spiritual descendants. Yes. yes. Those yes. who have the same faith that he had. Yes. That's, that's what justifies us and yes. ensures the salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes, does it take to be a descendant, a direct descendant of Abraham to be part of a remnant, mm -hmm. the remnant that is being spoken of in Revelation? No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Does it even take to be Abraham himself? What it, what it took for himself to be, to be a remnant? To believe. Really. To believe. Mm -hmm. He had to believe. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Sabina, yes. He could easily have said, I'm from Ur. I don't have any religious, spiritual exactly. background, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, God had to call him out of that city yes. to accomplish a special purpose in his life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and a lot mm -hmm. of us, you know, the enemy could say to us, well, look at your upbringing, you know, mm -hmm. look at your family background. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and that, that has nothing to do with whether we can be saved or not. Yes. Salvation is based in what Jesus has done for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we'll accept and believe that by faith, yes. we're yeah. part of his remnant. Yes, because <laughs> Jesus conquered that. Yes, Heidi. I just have a quick question then. Yes. Was, was Abraham himself a Gentile? Yeah. <laughs> could, that's he, a good question. That, yes, Billy. He was, actually, Joshua 24 says that Abraham used to worship idols. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as we just read, you know, Galatians 8, uh, 3, verse 8, basically God had to preach uh, the gospel uh, to Abraham, and so it gives you the idea that, and also not to forget, like uh, in Genesis 12, you know, Abraham was 75. Mm -hmm. So at 75, yes. God started preaching the gospel to him, 
Yes. And prior to that, 75 years of his life, he was an idol worshiper. <laughs> So yeah. he was maybe the, one of the longest, you know, Gentiles mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the Bible because, you know, he spent all of his, his life worshiping mm -hmm. idols and yeah. God still saw potential in him. Yes. And he turned all that aside and he followed God. Yeah. So, yeah, so if a 75-year-old idol worshiper could become <laughs> mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, the great, a great nation, exactly. of course, you know, uh -huh. it can happen to anybody. Yes, and I, and I think that this text brings this truth saying that, you know, um, script that in the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand. So even Abraham had to receive salvation through Jesus Christ yeah. and for him to be part of the remnant what took for him was faith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That he right. believed even not knowing what was coming God gave him a promise that now we understand that his seed was actually Jesus mm -hmm. and that we in Jesus, we are part of the descendancy of Abraham, right? Yes. But he had to first believe without knowing how is it that God would unfold that truth in his life. So, and to conclude that, also we can look on uh, Galatians from verses 26 to 29. Uh, can you please open there and... Uh, Let's look there, maybe. Travis, would you please read that for us? Galatians 3, 26 to 29, and mm -hmm. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Therefore is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in oh. Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So what are some truths that we can learn from these uh, verses as well? From the first one that we read, the previous one, the previous text we read in Galatians, we learned things such as that Abraham's faith is what accounted him for righteousness. We also saw that uh, this faith is what make us true children of Abraham. And also that Abraham had himself to be preached the gospel. And now from this one text here, how, what else can we affirm? The gospel mm -hmm. is from everybody. Mm -hmm. That nobody is, is eliminated from the group. The gospel was to be to the whole world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the beautiful part of the gospel message. Mm -hmm. Yes, and how can we remain faithful then to this covenant with Jesus that we were offered? Like, you know, he, he has chosen his people and as a consequence from what we are reading here, he has also chosen us uh -huh. as long as we accept his choice for us. So how is it that we can remain faithful to this covenant <laughs> primarily? What's the main item to be faithful to that? So I would say that the underlying, what we're, we're assuming already is that we have chosen to mm -hmm. accept that, right? Yes. We've chosen God versus the alternative, you know, Israel yes. had two choices, either obey yeah. or and serve God or disobey and serve yeah. other than God. But um, in order to do that, just see, John 15 comes to my mind. Mm. This, this is not just a casual interaction. It's a, an intentional mm. commitment yes. to God. Yeah. And I think that's what the call is to, is to keep our eyes on Jesus Mm. and to um, get closer and closer to him each day. Amen. Stephanie, for those who may not know John 15, mm -hmm. that's the whole idea of abiding in mm -hmm. him, yes. right? Yes. Like a branch grafted or connected yes. to the vine. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it's not a one-time thing, well, I, I choose Jesus, mm -hmm. but, it, it, but it's a daily living in him. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. A daily mm -hmm. living in him mm -hmm. that, that we... Yeah, we, we abide or remain in Him. Yeah. Yes, Travis. I think of the New Covenant promise we read earlier a few studies ago in Jeremiah 2 where He will write His law on our hearts and in our mind. Mm -hmm. That's part of the promise. So mm -hmm. it, it really is like Abraham. We have to believe. Amen. We might have, we might say, you don't know how bad I am or where I've mm -hmm. come from. How can I change? But 
Mm -hmm. But a diseased or broken life is the greatest miracle of all. And that's God's in the business of changing lives. Amen. And uh, he wants to change your life and you have to believe yes. that he can. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it does take belief and faith and our response as we are talking here is obedience, you know. Mm -hmm. Just as with me when I was a child, as I was saying, mm -hmm. when my father would choose me, he chose me by his grace, by his love, mm -hmm. because of his oath of love for me. And that's the same with us. And then we respond with obedience. We respond knowing that God has our best interest in heart. Mm -hmm. And if you also were watching us today, if you want to be part of a remnant people of God, remember what is it that Abraham did and what is it that he's expecting his people in the end times to do, which is to keep the faith in Christ. And as a response to keep the commandments of God, he certainly wants you to be part of this remnant. He's offering this gift to you. And just as he preached the gospel to Abraham back there, he's preaching to us today. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited and hopeful to meet you there also one day in the Canaan in heaven. That's the promise that we have. And that takes only and only our faith in Christ and our true response of ones who believe in him, which is to follow him wherever he takes us. Amen. Thank you so much. And Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. What a great study. I just, uh, I'm just praising God. And, and, you know, if you watch Hope Sabbath School on a regular basis, you've heard some of Sabina's testimony mm -hmm. of how she encountered Jesus Christ as a teenager and surrendered her heart to him and how she's been on a journey. And it's exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. Sabina, to hear you sharing the Word of God today. Have you been blessed? Yes. Yes. I know you've been blessed too. I feel like we've been to the throne of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the invitation Sabina just gave. She's going to be looking for us when we gather around the throne of God. Most of all, our great and awesome God is going to be looking for us. Mm -hmm. He's going to be looking because every provision has been made mm -hmm. for us to be part of that faithful remnant who will welcome Jesus, when he returns in glory. Let's pray that we'll be faithful to that call, to that invitation, mm. and that we will, as Stephanie pointed out, we will abide in him day by day, mm. not to earn his love, mm -hmm. but because he loves us and we love him too. Mm. Let's pray together. Mm. Our Father in heaven, our hearts are moved as we think of all you've done. To, to call us to be part of your chosen people, not because of how special we are, but because of how awesome and loving and generous you are. Mm -hmm. But we have a choice to respond, mm -hmm. to say, by God's grace, I, I choose to be part of that remnant mm -hmm. who are faithful to you. And Lord, thank you for each one who makes that decision today. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Don't keep the good news to yourself. Go out and be a blessing to those around you.